HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest on Hiller boys and girls soccer. The select board received an update from Hopkinton Youth and Family Services. We have highlights from this year's bocce showdown and scenes from the annual Hopkinton Area Land Trust meeting. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Hopkinton School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh recently released an update regarding the school's budget as well as enrollment. Our, our personnel, and just to add personnel to one of our schools, the Hopkins School, we're at 4%. In those smaller boxes, I've outlined the high school, the middle school, the Elmwood School, Marathon, and any special education costs. This doesn't include curriculum costs, it doesn't include technology costs, it doesn't include busing costs. But as you're looking at those boxes, you can see there are question marks in them. And so when you look at the growth at Hopkins, the growth across the district is not dissimilar. It's not as if all of the students entered Hopkins, but they are spread out pretty evenly across Marathon, the high school, the middle school. So if you imagined that each one of those boxes also represents very close to a percent, you can imagine that the school budget may need to go up about 10% next year with this sort of back of the napkin, back of the envelope kind of math. The entire update can be found at hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Area Land Trust hosted their annual meeting at the HCAM studios. Barry Rosenblum explained what the Land Trust is about. The Land Trust is, um, when we were established in 1994 with the charter, it was to assist in acquiring and maintaining Hopkinton's open space and conservation land. It's interesting, it's a standalone corporation. It's not an entity related to the town government. It was formed by five residents of Hopkinton. It's a federal nonprofit and a state nonprofit corporation. And everybody on the board are volunteers. All of the labor and energy that goes into maintaining this trust and its responsibilities are done on volunteer hours from the nine of us and some supported by about eight other land steward volunteers. Um, the budget is funded purely through membership dues and donations that we get annually. Okay? A, a short excerpt, I've highlighted the main emphasis from the trust mission statement the trust is formed to preserve, maintain, and conserve land in Hopkinton, in the boundaries of this town. Also, we take on a role of educating the public. We have a new website now that we hope will, will uh, really lead that effort a bit further. And we'll refer more people to it with some educational material. We also facilitate the use um, and encourage land conservation in talking to homeowners, developers, and working with the town. And that's our primary mission in life. Some of the many accomplishments of the Hopkinton Area Land Trust were highlighted during the meeting. A thousand acres of open space has, is now owned by the trust in fee or under conservation restrictions on the land. There's over 15 miles of trails that are actively used by the community. We've applied for 17 grants. We've, we've won 16 of them to help fund projects on, the, on this land that we're responsible for. We've also installed a geocaching program, which we'll talk about a bit further in the presentation. 
And we've also increased trust awareness through newsletters, efforts and articles, and events. So that's a high-level summary of the past 24 years. They also recognized an Eagle Scout who helped renovate one of the trails in Hopkinton. Uh, um, yeah, sure. What were the highlights for you? So, um, yeah, it was a it was a, a tough project. Um, we had to. There was a lot of debris, metal debris that we had to clear, especially barbed wire on the trail. So that was tough, but um, we were able to get through it. A lot of volunteers. I want to t thank uh, the Troop One in Hopkinton. There were a lot of scouts there. Um, my troop. Uh, who volunteered and helped me get through the project, and especially um, Halt, um, and especially Mr. Ferber, uh, was a big help in planning the project and getting the work done. And as for members of my troop, uh, that I especially want to thank my Eagle Scout coach, uh, Mr. Kimball. Uh, he uh, did a great job in assisting me in planning the whole project and helping to, to see it through with me um, if I had any questions. Um, and my scoutmaster, Mr. Packer, uh, was also a great guiding force, and as well as Mr. Dion and Mr. Haskins, who are a few some parents in the troop that were especially helpful. You can see the full meeting airing on HCAM or at our YouTube page or our website, hcam.tv. The select board received an update from Hopkinton Youth and Family Services, and they talked about their partnership with the Mental Health Collaborative Here's a look. Mental Health Collaborative was sparked by a former patient of mine who lost his life um, and died by suicide. And that's what prompted me to start this. Um, anyway, I've just become more and more aware of the need for mental health education and awareness and community building, and that's really why I'm doing this. Um, our core program, and I'm, it's, I don't know if it's okay to leave some of these cards here. Absolutely. But our core program is based on mental health literacy. So really, just like we teach people and expect people to know math literacy, overall health literacy. Mental health literacy is also crucial and critical. Um, so we're piloting our program beginning in Hopkinton at no charge. Um, we are funding a program called Challenge Success in the high school beginning this fall. And we are working with this uh, middle school and high school on piloting some mental health curriculum programs beginning in the spring and we'll um, hopefully do community-based program programs if they're wanted in the community and our our goal mental health collaborative our goal is to eventually grow into neighboring towns as well and just the, another initiative and the reason that I'm here with Don tonight is um, we're also doing a community a mental health community needs assessment and um, <coughs> Our goal is to use that information to, um, you know, guide some of our programming and really have an idea of what's important to our community in regards to mental health. Um, so the survey is currently online mm -hmm. until October 5th, so there's about 10 days left. Um, and I'd love to ask you to offer any help you can in supporting and maximizing the participants in Hopkinton. Um, so it's open to people ages 18 and up. We're collaborating with Hopkinton Youth and Family Services to do this and with Boston Research Group. So it's anonymous, takes less than 10 minutes, and I would just love as many people as possible to, to give us information as to what they need and where they feel the gaps are in regards to mental health. So, any questions? And I think Don wants to talk about another initiative too. Sure. Thank you, before, Don. Be, Don, before you start, does the board have any questions? I have a question, Mr. Abby. Mr. Herr? Abby, the survey, has um, EHOP, through their communications channel, have they notified their uh, constituents, yes. what you call them, that they're, yes. it's online? Yeah, we've had a lot of support with HCAM, um, EHOP, uh, just social media, right. just trying to get the word out. It's hard. People are so busy. It's hard. I have some surveys at the Hopkinton Senior Center, and um, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. All right, Don, you're up. Okay, thanks. So I'm Don Alcott, I'm the Director of Youth and Family Services, and, and just what an honor and pleasure to collaborate with Abby. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing when a resident um, comes forward in this way to do something for their community when they didn't have to. 
And um, so I, I applaud her and her efforts um, to serve the community in this way. And we'll certainly glean a lot from the data about what we can do for youth and family services um, here um, in Hopkinton and for the residents in Hopkinton and how we can partner together. Um, there's more than enough to go around in terms of mental health needs. If you're interested in learning more or participating in the survey, you can find details at our website, hcam.tv. Coming up next, Hiller Soccer highlights scenes from the annual bocce throwdown at the Senior Center, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Senior Center hosted an open house as well as their annual bocce event. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Senior Center hosted an open house and the annual bocce tournament featuring the seniors, Hopkinton Police, and Fire. Here's a look at the festivities. We're doing some pumpkins out of toilet paper. We're making some pinwheels out of fabric. Um, we're making little skeletons out of cups. That's it. They look like mummies, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then we're also doing some bookmarks over here. Bookmarks over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are bookmarks. Oh boy. Oh, and that looks like that's going to roll in. That could be. We're going to have to get Ooh. the tape out. So that's the 11th point. It looks like the Council on Aging is going to take the win. So they would, but are they going to throw the last ball? Sure, I'll throw the last ball. Why not? This is great already won. Well, unless she spocks it. She could spark it right just, out. She should just drop it. There she goes. Wow, nice little spin. And then it rolled back. So, so Gree gets the 11th, 11th point. So, I have uh, one officer right here. So, no. So what? So now we got the seniors beat the staff. It was A for effort, Judy. By the way, that's that capital A for effort. Yeah, well, I mean, you had your hour. one hour. You had your one hour uh, one orientation hour. training practice right. session. Right. All right. So, who, who's up next? So now it's supposed to be both the police and the fire department, and who, whichever one of them wins, these guys play them. This cute little ball is called the Polino. Polino. And that starts each game, and the Polino gets thrown, and it has to be more than halfway down. <laughs> and within a foot from the borders. Which is indicated by those white markers in the middle. Correct. Okay. And other than that, we just alternate uh, teams. In this case, it'll be red and green. Alternate who scores versus who didn't score. And you'll be calling that from the middle? Yep, and I'll have my American not metric measurement system. Okay. Just so everyone will be uh, on the key of G. And, uh, we got through the last game without any fights. 
Well, we almost had one at the beginning. You, you, you and John were kind of going at it. We were getting a little nervous. I had to separate you two and get you a little <laughs> apple juice, and you guys were fine. Well, that's All right. why we have so, the police here. The, now the police are here, so there's no best around because they take it seriously. So you're already there, right? You're almost halfway there to 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's, what, what's going through your mind right now? I'm thinking it'll probably just take one more round until we get to 11. One more round. That's very confident yeah, of you. Uh, we'll double up on some points. You, you do know Chief Lee built a bocce car in the basement of the police station. <laughs> and these guys are pretty good. They could be just playing with you. Uh, that's definitely a possibility, but uh, we've moved one of our trucks out and have a bocce bay in the apparatus bay as well. So I wouldn't rule this out just yet. I was wondering why that trucks were parked outside all winter. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, go get them. All right. What? What? Really? Uh, a lot of rule changes this year we weren't aware of. This game's in the protest. Protest. This Preston, is... You can tase him. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see it here first. The first tasing. It was... Oh, they already got rid of it. Yeah. Wow. 11 to 2 I, was the final. I think the chief just tore it down and ripped it all up. But they... I can't believe how fast that went. And I just talked to it'd be back two seconds to tell them what's going on. You know, I don't even think we have enough people tuned into YouTube yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it was, I did not expect a blowout like that. He is. Oh, oh. too much. Yeah, but that's one point instead of three. I don't know. It might need a measurement. Maybe you got Josiah here. You got to change All it up. That, oh! oh. That could be one point. That might but, be two. But you got, well, you got a red. That might closer. be two. I know, but you still got Ted throwing, so. Uh, we might need a measurement. Oh, this yeah. one's in. Oh, a little uh, we'll, we'll see what Hank says. That's a definite. I think. That's the game! Wow. wow! The fireman got smoked by the seniors! Holy cow! Can you believe it? The Council of Aging, the seniors it? team, takes it all. Wow. Unbelievable. Holy cow! The seniors take home their first ever bocce challenge championship outplaying the senior center staff, the Hopkinton Police Department, as well as the Hopkinton Fire Department. Congratulations, seniors. You can catch the whole bocce event airing soon on HCAM. Hiller boys and girls soccer are nearing midseason. Here's the latest on how the teams are doing. On September 12th, Hiller's girls soccer took on Westwood. No goals were scored until the second half when Westwood's Ava Connaughton did this. A pair of headers there by the Hillers. I can sell them on the last one. There's a boot. That's a trouble. Uh-oh. And that's in! Goal, Westwood! What an unbelievable shot that was from the corner of the box. The Hillers responded on a penalty kick with under five minutes left. Here she goes. Go nice Hillers! Attention. Well struck. Delaney Mick ties it up. Less than five minutes left to go. The Hillers and Westwood end in a one-to-one -one draw. On September 17th, the Hillers hosted Norwood and took control early. Now Delaney Mick, chip, chip, chip. Rushing in, shot, goal, Hillers! Comes at 2.20 into the first half, Delaney Mick. Allie Bird added another in the first half. Yeah, certainly is, here comes Allie Bird. Rushing in, shot, goal, Hillers! Well struck ball. Comes at 21.01 left, Allie Bird makes it two to nothing. And a few minutes later, Emily Murphy added yet another. Here comes Siri up the far side. Rushing in. Topo, There's nice shot. shot and it's in. Four first half goals and six more in the second half, Hillers took down Norwood 10 to nothing. 
The girls followed up with a couple of tough, well-fought-out losses to Medfield and Holliston, and currently stand at three wins, three losses, and one tie on the season. On September 24th, the Hillers boys took on Holliston. No goals were scored until late in the first half when this happened. Yeah, this is danger zone. Talk it out here and try to game plan. Yep, 20 yards out, a little bit of an angle. Keeper's got uh, a large wall set up with five, five defenders. What do you think they're going to do here? Go straight for the net? No, well, they should be, they should go upper right hand upper the keeper's upper left hand corner. The wind's blowing. The wall set up for the right side. Simon oh. Rudder is going to fake it. Look at this. Nice. Oh! Wow! Great take. Upper left hand corner, right where you should have put it. Goal, Hillers Owen Schnur. Well struck ball from Schnur. 10.52 left to go in the first half. one nothing Hillers. That was impressive, Steve. Yep. Yep. Put it right where he should have. Upper left-hand corner. Owen Schnurr with a beauty on the free kick. Holliston responded, however, in the second half. Get in there, too. A little confusion. Pass to Dijon. Shot. Good save. And it's deflected away by Krantz. Great diving save by Krantz. Stoika on the corner. Header, nice goal. Hit. Cotting with a goal. Ty Cotting makes it one to one. The senior captain coming through. Yeah, he did a delayed run into the box. Nobody ran with him. He went in all alone on the goaltender. He had the earlier Holliston goal. He got yeah. it again. Oh, no, it's a save. Almost had it. Cotting got, got his head on the ball. Krantz is shooken up. There was some contact there, I think, between Cotting and Krantz. Krantz tried to cut him off and just some simultaneous contact. Just pass up to Carson. Panthers threatening. Here comes Stoika. Good footwork there. Trying to center it up. Can anyone get there for Holliston? Yep. There's a shot and a goal. It's Ben Siegel. 2-1 Panthers. Assist Stoika. Holliston takes the 2-1 to one lead and held on to take the win by that same score. The Hiller boys now have two wins, three losses, and two ties on the season. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, September 30th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod talks with members of the Senior Center about their new positions on a new episode of Senior View. On Wednesday, October 2nd at 7 p.m., Town Manager Norman Kumalo talks with Sharon Lisno of the Michael Carter Lisno Respite Center on a new episode of Hopkinton Works. And at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Police and Fire Departments face off in this year's Bocce Throwdown Tournament on a new HCAM TV special. And on Thursday, October 3rd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live in HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Boys Soccer vs. Holliston and the Girls Soccer vs. Westwood games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. Well, that's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community, and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea I want to hear from you, email me at news at With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. 
For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The 45th Annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. A great turnout was on hand to take a look at the dozens of vendors, enjoy the musicians, and some delicious treats. Um, Poly Arts has been my favorite day in Hopkinton since we've been here, and I think I've only missed two Poly Arts in over 19 years. And um, I ha also have a love of art, so I love coming here and decided to volunteer. So I've been volunteering on poly arts for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And um, we have, poly arts, first of all, is a nonprofit and we um, award at least two $1,000 scholarships to Hopkinton High School graduates who are going on to either major or minor in the arts. And they use the word arts loosely. It could also mean dance, um, theater, photography, creative writing. Um, so that's our main focus. And we raise funds by hosting our poly arts events here on the Common. Each vendor um, submits a fee with their application and that's where our funds come from. And this year we have over 70 artists and vendors um, who are on the Brick X on the Common, but then we also encourage community involvement with our nonprofit uh, groups. So here, this area here, is um, showcases a lot of our nonprofits who have activities for children. So uh, you can see here we've got pumpkin tic-tac-toe, we've got Hiller's Boosters uh, selling gear here, we even have the uh, Hopkins High class of 2023 here, we've got paint and party doing crafts, henna tattoos, um, alpacas, the girls volleyball team is over here, they do face painting, nails, and other tattoos. Uh, so it's just, and we've got the library's Apple Crisp is always a huge hit. Historical societies here, Boy Scouts uh, supplies food for sale. Um, and we've got some church groups.